Welcome in everybody. Before we get into today's update, I want to go over a quick overview of what to expect. As you can see behind you, the Dow is down 41 points, s and is down 19, NASDAQ down 94.7, Russell 2000 down 16.64 points. So as you can see, there's a lot of volatility this morning, a lot of instability in the stock market. We've got to talk about XRP as it maintains under 38 cents. We were sitting at about 0.3754 this morning. Um, we also have to look at Bitcoin and the DXY as it still maintains over 105. If you guys see my left eye watering, I have keratoconus in this morning. It's uh, it's very sensitive, so I'm not crying. I'm okay. It's just I can't see out of my left eye, and I have uh, if you can see, there's a white spot over the top. It's scarring. It's from keratoconus, but sometimes my eye waters, and that's what's going on this morning. But since I do all of these, um, these are just transparent live shots. I don't edit them, so you get what you get. Anyhow. We need to get into the charts and we need to see exactly what the flow is going to be to end the week as the trading week ends tomorrow. Today is Thursday, so we're going to see what happens to end this week. Make sure to hit that like button as it will greatly push me through the analytics and it'll help get more people in here to see this video when I put it out. I greatly, greatly appreciate each and every one of you because without you, this would be pointless. And because we all work together, we're going to do something special in this next chapter. We just have to be very careful. As we can see, the market is very instable, uh, unstable, unstable. You see Tesla was down 8% today. And I believe the broader markets, if the S&P can't get back over 4,000, it's going to be a real, real um, transparent look at what's about to come in crypto. And we need to pay attention because I believe this historical drop is not done yet. And I believe the next chapter is going to wipe out. It's going to wipe out retail. So make sure to hit that like button and watch the entire update because it's going to be a very informative video. Good morning, 9.37 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on this Thursday, March 2nd, 2023. I'm XRP Future Millionaire, and I reside in the great state of Michigan. As we can see, the s and is down 28 points right now, down to 3,928, so that's getting on some very shaky ground. DXY burst up just now, up to 105.03. You can see the U.S. 10 years up to 4.064, up 1.7%, so that is not a good sign this morning. We got the gold-silver ratio up to 88.5, which is spectacular. We got gold and silver continuing to be under pressure as silver is down 1.2%. We got gold only down about 0.4%. So silver, once again, is dropping faster than gold. We got F Fortuna Silver Mines just about at 3 bucks now. So some tremendous deals opening up. But as we talked about 104.02 on the U.S. dollar, it's had a nice little rally this morning. And we talked about this yesterday. As long as we didn't break this 200 at 103 spot 86, we're fine. We needed to come back up here and break 104 spot 63 again and get on the top side. And then try to push up to the 105 spot 29 and or 105 spot 303 and break it. As we said right here, didn't seem to be the end of the pattern. Looked like we were coming down for consolidation. We had a hefty drop just to pull back up. So we're going to see if we can get past 105 spot 30 and then ultimately try to make this push up to 106. Otherwise, this could be a double top formation, so we need to watch that. But it does look like a nice reversal took place, so we need to watch this as the day goes on. But I figured we would start there because the link between crypto and the DXY is strong. We've got the total crypto market cap on this right arm looking like it got rejected to 1.049 uh, trillion resistance. That was our only resistance up to 1.139. We could say we also built another one up at 1.095. So we can put that in there just so we can see point of references here. And then now if we lose the 200 day here in the three hour time frame at 1.023, it would be a hell of a confirmation that we're coming back down to 990 billion, which is not a surprise because we've been talking about it forever. We've got XRP down 2.24%. As I, I said the other day when we were just over 38 cents that we could flash drop as that was in my headline, my title that a flash drop is, uh, is XRP building a flash drop or brewing a flash drop or however I worded it. Now we're down 2.24% today, back down to 0.3752.
kind of seems like it was all for naught to come up here. We couldn't break the 386. Critical resistance, even again yesterday, about 369, 12, 15 hours ago to about 5 o'clock last night, 4 o'clock yesterday uh, evening. We tried to make a push up here again. We got a double top here almost perfectly at 3850 and got rejected. So what I'm going to do is I'm moving this from 386 and I'm making an overzealous call and I'm moving it to 385 this morning. I'm tightening this range because we got a double top there. So tightening it to 385. So right now our R1 is 385. S1 is 377. But we're below it right now. So how can S1 be 377? Well, that's because we could be currently trying to flip at the resistance now after it's been support the last several days. So this could just be an overzealous pull down. So right now 377 is S1. 362 which I don't like that anymore, actually. We're going to play the range right here. 369. So S1, 377. S2, 3696. S3, 362. So we're tightening these ranges up for everybody this morning. So I hope you're uh, prepared this morning. And I hope you're paying some serious attention. Now we can see here as well, if we're paying attention, this 377, once we break this, 396 is on back. We just need to control... And get a rejection here as the 20 days right there in the area if we go to the four hour time frame it's about the same exact spot if you're on the bottom side of 3789 that's where you can get your first sign of uh oh and especially below 3771 we're actually going to call that resistance this morning so r1 is 377 r2 is 385 r3 is 395 roughly S1 is 3696, S2 is 362, S3, if you want to do an in-between, is about 355, but we're going to go all the way down to 347, as that's the real pattern formation here. And now, I like to uh, look at this as a teaching uh, teaching community, so a teaching uh, YouTube. So I throw a lot of information at you, and we do a lot of definitions as well. In this morning video, I'm not going to do any definitions, but we are talking about the chart pattern. And it does look like we're still within a falling channel. Some people are saying a broadening wedge. And the difference would be, right now I'm using the falling channel because we diagnosed it very early. Resistance 1, resistance 2, resistance 3. Support 1, support 2, support 3, support 4. So we're saying this falling channel started at about January 23rd on resistance. The 22nd on support. So it's about the same exact, actually the 22nd on both. Then we start to go. So now if you wanted to say a broadening wedge, you could say hit one is right here on January 23rd. Hit two could be slight, and I'll show you what it would look like. You could say this is more of a broadening wedge. Something like that. And then you could come up here. Let me delete this. And then you could come here and say, well, we started here, and now it's pushing here. And that could be a broadening wedge started. But me personally, I showed you it just so you could see. But I just, I want to use it as a falling channel until it breaks it. A broadening wedge would suggest that it's a bullish breakout about to happen. So to me, until it happens, I'm not going to confirm a broadening wedge. I like the falling support, the falling channel, as it could still be considered kind of like a bull flag setup. But with the falling channel, we have a falling range, which means our, we're getting lower lows and lower highs. So that's where I'm more comfortable saying. I know it could be a broadening wedge, but now we're just we're just trying to grasp for straws here. Because if we say a broadening wedge, we're insinuating that this is a bullish reversal here. And that we're guaranteeing a breakout on a broadening wedge. On a falling channel, it would be a further move down if we can't break out of the channel. But if you push out of a falling channel to the top side, it's still a bullish break up. So I just think the falling channel gives us more of an identity. That's just me personally. That could be completely wrong, but that's the way I perceive the market. And I'm going to present it in the way that I perceive it because it helps me trade the market. And then if you have this overextension of the downtrending resistance, whoops, get rid of this. That's unnecessary. And then you get the overextension here and you can see how that would come exactly down. So right now you can see we have a pattern formation. We don't even really need this because we broke out of it, but that's just when we broke down. And then we even got the rejection point up in here, as you can see. 
So now we've got this down trending resistance. This is a very good way to look at it too. 392. You could even look at 393. This is right around the 394 where we have or 395. So that's the down trending resistance we need to pay attention to. And now we could get sandwiches as far as having to build this pattern out now. We're starting to become very bearish. We need to break out of here if we don't want to start to have these little flash drops. And the flash drop, again, it'll show us around this 347, 344 level. And then if we look at the all-time pattern, which we're on, but I wanted to look at one thing in between. Here we go. This is the descending triangle. If you go out in the long term, that's why this move was so important. We got up, and now was this a break up to hold roughly the 375? Or are we coming right down? So watch out for the 375 approximately. If we can get above the 375 and hold it, this could be the first time that we're trying to push out of here as well. And then even if you're playing the descending triangle, that would be your cap off resistance. And it's so perfect how that does play out like that at around 45 cents. Because if you look at the all time pattern, it highly suggests that this downtrending resistance at 40 cents will be the first breakout level. And then if we ended up continuing on, you got about 44 cents right here. So anywhere between 44 and 45 cents, but you would have to break out and get past this 394 on this, even this part of the pattern. So there's a lot of ways that we have to go to break out. But I actually could see this being off slightly, actually. Not a lot, just a little bit. And we have to be transparent. Otherwise, these numbers are not going to match. So a subtle change just like that. That's That seems more accurate to me. So yeah, that 398, 397 level is actually very important. So pay attention to this. This is a very big XRP look. This is a very wide, and I'm not going into anything else. We did the XY, and we're doing XRP. And my update later, we'll do the Bitcoin. We'll check on that. We'll probably do XLM and DGB as well this afternoon or this early evening. So pay very close attention because this is what I'm perceiving this morning with XRP. And these are what could the possibilities could be. Now, if we look at the 2020, we'll look at this on a longer scale. 2020 uptrend, if we lose, and I'll continue to say this, the 338 area, then it could present an opportunity for a drop all the way down to the 2017 uptrend at 18.6 approximately. And then if we lose that, we have the 2013 true uptrend at about 01579. Make sure to hit that like button. If you got anything out of this update, make sure to hit that subscribe button as we just went over 15,600 subscribers. I'm truly blessed by each and every one of you. And if you want to trade like I do on Mexi and or BitGet so that you don't have to pay spot fees and on the buy and sell, and you can also buy XRP in the USA, make sure you look in the video description below and or the pinned comments. And then if you want to join Tom's Army, I would be blessed. You look in the video description below and or the pinned message and you can join there. Hashtag be better, do better. Hashtag fight assassins. And remember, help one person each and every day. Because if I don't do my part and you don't do your part, what the hell is the point? Watch out for this historical drop as we can still be forming patterns up to about 45 cents. Hell, we could even go to 80 cents as a possibility. But that's a very big stretch. But as far as this pattern goes, if we lose the 338, that's when big things can happen when we lose that 2020 uptrend. So pay attention and be on alert.